True. Let it. Meeting right people. now. Yeah, buddy. Keep breathing, dude. Keep cruising. Got this. Yes, done. Jugs. All the way, come on. Welcome back to another episode of Anatomy of the Climb. Psyched you guys like these, we like doing them. Um, so today we're talking about a climb called Buzzsaw V10 in Black Mountain, California. We got our boy Aiden doing the climb. Um, so we're gonna talk about technique and some other stuff. Some anatomy and some training tips while yeah. we're at it too. All right, let's jump into it. I gotta have some value here, you know? Well, I guess. Oh my gosh, who is this camera guy? I think he's Christopher Nolan over here. And right there, let's stop yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let me put it on pen mode. Um, let's just look at this setup right here because, you know, right off the bat, not really the body position you want to be in when you're about to move to another hold. I mean, look at his like hips are like, whew, his butt's like sticking way out. And let's talk about the direction of force he's creating here. This foot is pushing him that way, but he wants to go wee up there. <laughs> look at that arrow. So good. Um, so obviously he's, he's pulling this way with his arm with his hand and this hand is pulling him up a little bit, but still this foot is just pushing him way over. We don't want that. We don't want him pushing away, but um, it's okay because Aiden knows what he's doing. And as soon as he actually goes for the move, he clearly rocks over his foot and he's back into a good setup here. So obviously his hips open up and now he's pushing up with his foot rather than mm -hmm. that way like he was before. So he's pushing up towards the hold. So direction of force, always important to pay attention to. And clearly, um, even if he didn't start out in the right position, he knew that he had to rock over that foot before he went to the next move. So yeah. And then if we look at that kind of position he was just in as well, just for a little training tip too, if we look through here, so he is very like, I wouldn't say quite locked off, but it's a very tight position. So this is one of those opportunities where working on like those pull-ups, like that top end of it is gonna give you that strength as he pulls in, because you'll notice as he gets that, his elbow comes down actually super low um, to get that boom right there before he goes to that move. So very like very high pull position. So if you're doing some like pull-up training, you know, getting that chest way up to the bar and not just kind of settling for getting that chin over and then holding that position will let you feel more strong and comfortable sitting through here. Um, and then we'll see, boom, that more extended position with the, the going for that wider right hand uh, puts the shoulder, you know, above shoulder height here. So it's again, it's another one of those opportunities where that lower trap is going to be working to help pull in that downward angle um, and keep his chest close to the wall. So on this side, we have more of the, the rhomboid working. And on this right shoulder, we have more of that lower trap working. So again, another opportunity where that like lower trap comes into play with that D2 flexion exercise. I wanted to mention too, before we move on to the next move, that this is obviously a very moonboardy problem. Like, um, <laughs> it's slightly overhung, not as overhung as a moonboard problem, but it's a lot of just squared up moves where you open your hips up to the wall and you pull up and try to lock off and just go to the next hold. Um, so if you've ever wondered if the moonboard directly translates to outdoor climbing, it definitely can sometimes. This is a really good example of that. So there's definitely technique involved. But the fact that it is so moonboardy removes a lot of the usual 
technique trickery, foot trickery that you can do in, in climbing to sort of get around your weaknesses um, if you need to do that. And a climb like this is very strength dependent. Like if you have the strength to do it, you can, you can do the moves. If you don't have the strength, you can't come up with some heel hook or toe hook or something to just avoid those moves. So um, it's a good one where you can either be strong enough to do it or you're not strong enough to do it. So the other thing I wanted to point out, and it shows it really well on the left arm right now, but it also before he moved was really important. Again, he's trying to stay really close to the wall. Um, and so that involves scapular retraction. Let's see, right there. Mm, that's the perfect shot I wanted. Scapula! Because as he's pulling himself into the wall, he's still in this externally rotated position as well. And so again, external rotators, super important for climbing and all that stability. And in this position, you know, the, the right arm's a little bit lower, the left arm's a little bit higher, but doing that scapular retraction in that angle with the external rotation so that the W exercise is a great one to build strength and stability for that type of technique. Indeed. Shall we move on to the next move? Indeed. Alrighty. So much indeed. Whoopow. He's just cruising right here. He knows what to do. He's fallen off this climb like 13,000 times. I have footage to prove it. <laughs> I thought he flashed it <laughs> for like first time. So, I mean, it's it's similar like as he's preparing for the next move. Again, we look at the, the angle here, like the humerus in relation to the body with the scapular retraction. So this is a great opportunity for, you see that arrow? Mm. For that that human T exercise to get that middle trap nice and trained up. In fact, you can kind of see like a nice little outline of his traps there. So we got mid, lower and upper on both sides. Look at that. Beautiful. So good, like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond, Aiden. So another like important training tip for this, if we look just at like how extended he is on the right shoulder and how like kind of bunched up he is on the left, just a good way to de develop that pull strength and the back strength with that it, are doing these different pull-up variations. In this example, doing like those archer or the typewriter pull-ups. So pulling like wide to that side and trying to lock off through there. <laughs> I'll do the other way. Trying to lock off through there or you know, you're pulling yourself up, you're rocking to one side versus the other and making sure you engage both arms is a really great like training technique to feel comfortable when you're like loaded over on that side and kind of hanging out through here. So archer or typewriter pull-ups are, are great for that shoulder stability in this position. For sure. I want to, well, let's scrub through this real quick because I want to see. Okay, so he gets this foot way out right there and he gets this weird left foot super bunched up right underneath him. So, and he's going for this hold up here, obviously, which is probably a half pad four finger crimp. Um, it's well placed, it's in the direction you want it, but it is small to be able to be doing such a dynamic move to that small of a hold. Um, so let's look at his direction of force that he's generating here and see if he's doing it right. Um, so this foot is obviously pushing him up there. This hand is pulling him or at least stabilizing him in this direction, obviously. This is gonna pull him up and this one looks like it's kind of pushing yeah, it's up-ish. It's I don't think that left foot is doing a whole lot other than just sort of stabilizing his body mm -hmm. on there. Um, but I'd say that looks pretty good. His extremities are pulling or pushing him in the direction that he wants to go. Nothing is particularly working against him. None of his feet are pushing him like over here or something like that. Um, so I'd say he's doing a solid job there, obviously, because he does hit the move. Um, and this is how most people set up for this move. The last thing I want to talk about for this move is just the actual hold itself, the move to the big left hold and the way he hits it. Look at his, this is awesome. Again, moonboard stuff here. Look at the way he hits this left hand. He's hitting it in a full crimp, essentially. Like he, he doesn't even hit it open hand and then uh, try to reel it in. He just hits it the way he's going to hold it. And that takes a lot of strength, but it also takes a lot of confidence in the strength that you have. Like mm -hmm. you have to know consciously and almost subconsciously, your brain has to be mentally prepared for hitting a hold and maintaining that level of contact strength. Um, because if your brain thinks that you're going to get injured doing a move like that, it's not gonna let you hit a half pad crimp in a dynamic move in a full crimp like that. Hey, that's what I would say. Yeah, so yeah. you could leave. <laughs>
Yeah, so for sure the, the mental preparedness is important. And Aiden had tried that move many times and had fallen off trying to just, you know, he'd get a little bit closer every time, but he started off by just kind of flopping his hand up there and feeling the hold. And then he started to close down a little bit, but it was still very much an open hand and then he'd pop off. And then after, you know, 10 or so times, he realized that, okay, if I hit this, I'm not going to get injured. And this is partly a subconscious thing, but I'm not going to get injured. I can hit this at just full strength, full contact strength, full crimp. Um, and that's going to hold me on there and I can keep doing the move. So yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly what happens to people when they're climbing, even in the gym, where it's like they tried something that felt impossible the first time. And by the sixth time, they're like, why did this feel hard earlier? You know, part of it's warming the tissue up, but most of it's just your body accepting that not everything isn't going to just blow up on contact. Mm. Um, and it's the same thing even, you know, they talk about, you know, feats of superhuman strength like you may get hurt doing those like you know lifting the car off the child but it doesn't care at that time whereas beforehand you may have the capability but your body says no i'm going to get destroyed if i do this so why would i let myself so having enough contact points over it he's going to feel more comfortable doing it but you said again and i want to say something again ready yep talk look at that angle Ugh. D2 flexion, people, all day. Get that lower trap stronger so you can have better shoulders and not get hurt when you go for big moves like this. And also, this also kind of looks like that archer pull position again. But mostly, lower trap. Thank you. That's all. All right, you and me. Ready? You go. You, well, I don't have anything. This is this technique. That's just a bump right there to right. what? Look at this. No, I got it. Ready? Uh, oh, look at that. Do any of you do wide pull-ups ever? Huh? Why not? I don't. Look at that. Here's the deal. There's a million things that you could train. I get it. So I'm not going to just say you had to train all these things all the time. You know, sometimes you just want to climb and be good at it. But say this is your project, then you need to climb and do these moves. Like this is a prime example of where doing like a wide pull up is very helpful. So you can build strength. Like I don't actually see great shoulder stability here. Like his um, scapula are like flying out and like there's asymmetry between the two. Um, he still does it. He's got enough strength in, in his forearms and whatnot and probably the foot and the core, but they, you know, just for better stability, I would train those wide pull-ups to have better success on this move. So this is great that his shirt's off because we can really see, and he's also a very lean boy, so he can see all the things going on. So when you say like his scapula just popping out and doesn't look very stable, can you explain a little bit more? Because I don't actually know what you mean by that. Yeah, so he's trying to pull a lot through his lats to get um, like the strength to hold in this position, but with the, like as the arm rotates up, so as the arm comes up higher, the shoulder blades are gonna also rotate up with it. Um, there's a relationship, it, it's kind of debated, but it's like a two to one relationship where if there's a 180 degree arc, the shoulder itself travels 120 degrees and the scapula travels 60. So the scapula has to travel as the shoulder is traveling up as well. But in this position, there should be better engagement of the, like the lower trap and whatnot to help keep this more stable um, and other muscles like the serratus anterior to keep it closer to the chest, you can see how um, like the, the scapula is, it's definitely gonna be winging off to the side a little bit in either one. And that scapula is kind of just flying out there. Like that's the border of the scapula. So it's really upwardly rotated right now when it could be down like a little bit more because that almost looks like it would be his end range. Like I would expect his shoulder to be why did it get so small? <laughs> I would expect his shoulder to be like somewhere up here with that much like upward rotation of the scapula. You know, some people call that like a scapula humoral dysrhythmia, meaning that the scapula isn't moving with the right timing as the humerus. So arm and shoulder blade not moving perfectly together. I think it's just he probably doesn't have as much strength when both arms are out wider. And so what, what should he do to fix that? I mean, so he's, he's already like working on lower trap strength, which will help, but then incorporating that and working on that engagement with wider like pull-ups in those positions to focus on that scapular retraction in that pull position instead of just trying to use like lats and like your arms and biceps to do it would help stabilize when you hit that contact like that. Got it. That's super interesting. Yeah. 
Um, man, okay, so that was cool. Um, I'll just talk briefly about technique here because obviously this is not your typical just <laughs> your typical move out right here. Uh, let's see, let's go back a little bit. This is definitely not the standard beta to do this climb, but it totally works for Aiden. And I think there's a very specific reason that he chose to do it this way and that it worked out well for him. And I think it's actually a good beta. I mean, a pogo is a weird thing to do a lot of times, an outdoor climb especially, yeah. but in this case it worked well. In a way, it's a more efficient use of energy for this move because- Doesn't have to move his feet around as much. And it requires, yeah, that for sure. And it requires less full body tension, I think, to hold that position and go to the next move if he's doing it with a pogo. Because right now he's much more dependent on just his left hand here. Um, and there's not, he doesn't, if his right foot was on here, he'd have to have this really good line of tension through his body up here and here. Um, and instead, uh, he's just relying more on his left hand to hang on it. And then this, this left foot is just sort of stabilizing him and keeping him from just flying off the wall. Um, and so by doing this pogo beta, he uses the momentum of his leg to swing out that way. And, and when he gets sort of the apex of that swing with his leg, uh, he lets go of his right hand and grabs the right hand juggy pinch kind of thing. And that would not work at all if that right hand was a small crimp or something that he wasn't super confident that he could hold uh, with a lot of dynamic movement. But he is super confident that he can hold that because it's a pretty big hold. Um, so he doesn't care when his leg swings back after that pogo. It doesn't matter. It's not going to pull him off the climb, which pogos can do a lot, which is why they're usually not used because you usually go into a worse hold. Um, but he's going to a good hold, so he knows he can hold it. Um, so that was a very efficient and interesting technique there. So let's just watch it. Bam! There he goes. Um, so you can see his legs swing back when he does yeah, hit right. it. It's he boom and he hits it, but that doesn't matter because um, he's he's it's very stable. Yeah. Okay, one more big move and fly. There we go. So look at that. I mean, that's, is it a big hold? Is that right? Yeah, yeah it looks it looks like it's kind of like a jug. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's why he feels pretty confident throwing himself up to it. It's obviously a lot of power and, you know, that's a, a good time where you can work on power training. So he's going to generate, I mean, a lot of momentum with the pogo, but in that wide position, he also is going to pull to be able to hit that hold. Um, there's this cool kind of style you can do with that. Like a campus board would be great for training on it, but if you don't have a campus board, in order to work on a move like that, if you're trying to build more power, would be to do like a pull up where you, you, know, you start fully extended, you pull up with some speed and you try and like let one hand go before grabbing back on, lower back down, pull up with some speed, let the other hand go before grabbing back down. So that can kind of build that, that similar strength that he has there with that power to get to the next move because then you're like, you know, you're rapidly pulling and then like letting go. I mean, the whole point is to feel that power enough where you can actually let go, maybe even reach overhead before grabbing back down um, just to help generate more power to be able to do a bigger move like that. All right, whoa, well, that That's is it. all we have for today. Thank you for sticking with us through all that. That was a lot. Um, that was this is a cool one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll definitely do more of these soon. More, more, more. And more ladies. Oh yeah, we should have more more yeah. women in the strong climbers out there. Do you guys know any uh, people who are women and who send uh, some cool climbs with good? See, that's the problem: getting good, good footage. footage. Yeah. There's plenty of uh, YouTube videos, but they're like 240p. I'm like, I can't put three pixels on the screen and try to yeah. analyze it. It just doesn't work. So if you got good footage, um, send it over and maybe we'll analyze it. That's the end of today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time. Um, see ya. <laughs> Train, climb, send, repeat. Bye. have been feeling like v easies lately so you're almost getting into fifth class stuff lately you know? i i've been working on the five sixes now yeah well you i mean i feel like you were in the third class scrambles for years yeah, it just be. just trying to get up to vertical i was really focusing on technique though mm. yeah that's yeah I not really rock far. climbing technique but just <laughs> steep hiking hiking, yeah. hiking technique. you're almost oh you're just getting into the almost vertical you know um, pretty soon you can get some climbing shoes 
Uh, do you think that would help? No, not you. I've been using. You would need more. Um, help. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Skechers. I've been using Skechers. Skechers. Yeah, it's, the I light up that ones. Would be, yeah, I've, and then Crocs. Yeah, Crocs. Have you seen Crocs for your hands? <laughs> no. <laughs> Called Glocks. Glocks. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um, like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. <sighs> so lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.